Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting number 53, second one of 2015. As always, these meetings are being recorded for those people that are unable to be here. Let's get right to the agenda before I start talking about it, which is always my next thing I say. The agenda, we're going to triage. We have a few bugs that have backed up because we missed last week. Uh, and then we'll just say that R2 is released. We'll talk about that. And then always questions, comments, all that kind of good stuff. If I'm talking fast, I'm sorry. I'm running on so much little sleep <laughs> that <laughs> if I slow down, I fall asleep. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Bob, <laughs> ready? <laughs> I know, uh, more ready than you, I think. Totally counterintuitive, but it is the kind of thing that is. is, is uh, and I'm going to lose my mouse cursor. Yes, I have. All right, cool. If condition does not work in Bootstrap or WXS file, well, I doubt that's true. Well, there's an if def. Um, this looks like someone is expecting preprocessor to work at runtime. Yeah, and this is a not a support. This is not a bug. It's a support question. So let's go send them off to to um, Wix users. Dynamically set background color and setup UI. I want to prepare a custom UI. I want to set the background based on the system theme. Oh, the ability for theme util to have support system colors. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Because I think ours are always white right now, which for a while I was a little worried about, but then the more I saw it, the more I realized like it actually looks pretty good. <laughs> it, it can look very clean and stuff, but I could imagine people want like you know the battleship gray or whatever you'd get standard from the operating system. Yeah, well, we're using window. Well, usually it's hard coded, but white is the is the default window background color, right? It's dialogues that get the battleship. Um, right. Well, I think we should, I mean, making it possible to set the background color of the window properly, you know, whatever. It's like, yes, use this color, right? Because there's all those built-in colors. Yes, yes. So, and, right. well, and it's essential for, like, high contrast schemes. Right. That kind so, of being able to do yeah. good stuff there. So uh, this is a fine thing to do in 3X or... 4x or you know whenever somebody want to do it. Yep, I agree. Update element is unexpected child element of fragment contrary to chum. Oh, well that would be a bug, wouldn't it? Interesting. <laughs> Probably copy and paste hmm. error in the chum, in the XSD. I mean, like, hey, you can have this element here, and the answer is no, no, you can't. <sighs> um, well, actually. Well, that's interesting, though. I mean, oh, unexpected element of fragment. We we have yeah, we've had a bunch of these where where things. Oh no, this is the probably, opposite. They want the update to be able to be. An yeah, effect. this we had a bunch of, of stuff bad. in bundles that that you know ought to be supported in a fragment. Yep, but weren't. So the, I guess I'm yeah. not terribly surprised. So this is this is even easier. This is expanding instead of collapsing, which is even easier to do in 3X. Yes. So yeah. Fine with that. I'm not exactly sure how you'd get a ref to it. You'd have to get something else to get a ref to it for the update. Right. But right. Yeah. Again, that's a that's a, oh, as a dummy payload bonus. group. Ugh, yuck. Yeah. Well dude, bring back fragment ref and everything's fine. No. <laughs> Because then you just have fragment refs just littering all over the place. So we need to yeah, just find the right things to ref. Yeah, yeah. And again, um, this bundles are so new that I don't think we've had the, you know, uh, we haven't had the experience to go through through all these things before. And update is new, too, relatively uh, Update's even newer, yeah. So, all right. No, I, I think that's fine. We can put it in 3X. If someone wants yep. to talk about how to, f you know, work their way through it, that'd be fine. During installations. The MSI progress box is visible without the display internal UI. No way. Really? Yeah, that's. I asked for logs because I haven't seen this. I've never seen this before. The screenshot's kind of ugly. I mean, I'm not going to get to it. It, I it happens. Mouse cursor. Um, but yeah, I. Like I said, it's not a general problem, and off the top of my head, I don't know why. Um. Why it would happen? So, logs. are we sure that this is Burn doing this? This isn't some other MSI that's doing it. Everything's all scratched out. So hard to tell. 
Yeah. All right. Uh, log files, I guess. Yeah. We need more information. Uh, 3x, I guess. Cannot install Wix tool set on Win 7 64K 64K machine. Well, that would probably be the problem. <laughs> yeah, probably we require you know, a bit more. Um, yeah, let's yeah. send them to Wix users to have them help them with their installation problem. It's not a bug until we find out something that's going wrong. Yeah. And they are going to need to send us logs somehow. Wix VS extension properties aren't documented. I mean, oh, this is you. I should have known it. Uh, yeah. I do it. Phil just said, I do it. I don't know what I do it means. All right. Is that volunteering? I, you want to fix it? Win 764? You have a Win, do you have a Win 764K machine? I have no idea what P-Y-E-S is. Yes, maybe? <laughs> I guess that that P is parent. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah, we should do this. Oh, you want to take this in 310? Sorry, the VS14 stuff. Bob? Sorry, I'm, we're like discussing three different bugs. Phil's talking about the, the which one? The 64K machine where the guy needs to go get help getting his stuff installed. He's telling us that it did work there. Yes. And I'm oh, okay. Yeah, I, I've, I've done that one as well. I've done that install. So um, so I, I'm just going to send send them to the Wix users. Yes. Um, right. So Wix.js extension properties are... Not documented. Yes. Uh, do you want to take this in 310? And More importantly, do you want to take it? I'll sign it to myself. Long-suffering. Long-suffering doc. GDIP util should support icons? GDIP? GDIP? Okay. That's oh, GDI high plus util? Yeah, GDI, I didn't know that GDI plus did icons, but I suppose. It oh, does. Oh, they do icons for scale. I see. Yeah, yes. this would be awesome. Yes. Um, <laughs> it would be awesome uh, to have this feature. Yeah, GD, GDIP util right now only does bitmaps, <clears throat> yeah, so okay. we'd want to expand that to cover icons, and then theme util can more easily pick up uh, icon support. Makes sense to me. That would be awesome. Yeah. I mean, yeah, between this it, work and the stuff that Sean's doing in... Um, um, Wix 4? God, see, I'm, my sleep is just killing me, man. Um, in Wix 4, we're gonna, the theme deal is going to be like awesome, but yes, I agree, yes. this would be a great thing to have. Yep. State equals package state present every time after uninstall process. So he uninstalled, this is the log file from uninstall. Where's detect? Detect says present. So yeah, it's still present. So his, naps, his app's not getting uninstalled. Oh, wait, will not uninstall MSI package app. He found dependence. So it looks oh. like there's another bundle on the machine that is dependent on it. So by design, cool. I'm glad that works. So he has another bundle stuck on his machine. He probably manually nuked it and thought he got rid of all the registration, but did not. That happens. So yeah, by design. I'm glad that worked. Otherwise, we'd have a bug. Move some Wix standard BA button handling to that. Add the ability to do this, this, and this. Oh, this is Sean. This is a yeah. This is an interesting feature. And this is whip. There's a whip on this, right? Ah, very cool. We, yeah, we should come up with something that say whip in here, just so we know. Normally we start at the whips, but we'll do that. But actually, that we should add that to the agenda, real quick. Uh, not today, maybe. Maybe next That's, week. That'll work. No. Yeah, I'm just a little toasty to do anything beyond the, the bare minimums. Um, so, but yeah, no, this this. So basically, we're gonna start making theme util into that generic uh, uh, message handling or generic UI handling thing that I said we probably would never be able to figure out how to do. But Sean may figure out how to do it, which would be just fine. Well, this I, I took a look at the because um, Sean, you set up. Pull request. This was your TDD style thing, right? Where you sent like schema change it, 
Oh, no, no, no. That was that was the stuff we agreed to before about changing things oh. to do the conditional text and. Bare oh bare. yeah. Okay. That was oh, cool. I I, 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 I went through that whole code review one night when I was uh, bouncing with baby and I could. Rec- it turns out I could review code while bouncing with a baby. That wasn't horribly hard. Huh. There's a burn feature request out there that I'm like, I'm not going to be able to do this now. <laughs> but theme util, I was like, yeah, okay, this should be straightforward. And it was. It was good. Plus, uh, I only had to type like five things. So, you know, one-handed, single-finger pointing type thing takes for freaking ever, but it got the job done. Anyway, nobody wants to hear that. Um, I, this sounds like an interesting whip. We should talk about it if we could figure out ways to do... Because with the ability to do variables now inside a dialogue automatically setting them into variables, then the ability to go to a page and go to another page means that you could actually insert a page into the sequence and get variable stuff. Right, right, right. And then if we enhance the BA functions, maybe a little bit more to f- understand how to be fired after a page change or something like that, or a validate change, then you oh. could even on next validate, you know, with custom code, some custom code, validate whether those variables are, you know, valid, values or whatever. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Or we could go a step further and do something like WPF does, which is, you know, on focus or on edit or on verify of, you know, text box, it will fire a callback and you could register the callback, which the Wix Hater BA, of course, would fire, would wire into a BA function if it was there and, you know, be this gigantic, huge callback chain to a place where you could write custom code that as you type in a box, you could verify or, you know, be focused or whatever. I can see this actually working now. That's kind of cool, huh? Yeah, you just have to hook up some callbacks and everything will just do its thing. Yeah, it could be pretty cool. Um, yeah, 4.0, I think that'd be fantastic. If Sean wants to try to get in 4.0, I think that'd be cool. Theme Util should support scaling for high DPI, yes. This is, isn't there another bug on high DPI for Theme Util? I swear no. I a bug on that, no? Okay. It's one for... Uh... Uh, with standard BA. So probably... Oh, okay. I guess I translate that in my head to this, but okay. Right, right. <laughs> like, well, it, I guess it depends on, on how we have to do high DPI. So obviously I've been dealing a lot with high DPI lately. Yeah, you mentioned that. Um, yeah. Uh, and and right now, Femutal and Wix standard BA... Are, are just fugly on high DPI. It's it's well, yeah. not, it, it not looks good. like what all app would look like if it doesn't understand high DPI. Yeah, well, yeah, and theme well, is all based on pixels, right? So, so you have things like controls that are properly sized for high DPI next to really tiny text, and uh, and you know the layout's all wrong. But yeah. anyway. Um, if, well, honestly, I I always thought this was math. The question was just, you know, what is the math that you have to apply? Yeah, exactly. I don't know what it is because I've never done this kind of stuff. So if you happen to know what it is, well, I have an idea. But but maybe if if you know the Wix team were to buy me a high DPI monitor. Oh, hmm. dude. <laughs> you know, I have the same problem. It, it's funny. We were actually talking about this at Fire Giant. We're like. You know, everybody gets two monitors out of the gate, and you can set them up. And I've been talking that we may have to get everybody a third monitor that is a high DPI monitor that you just put right. on the third, and it'll be smaller because they're more expensive right now. But you know, in time they won't be. Anyway, okay, cool. Yeah, we should do this, and yeah. So then we'll just need something that has a high DPI monitor, um, which I don't have. I know somebody has a laptop. One of the guys at Fire Giant has a laptop that's high DPI. Oh. I don't think he'll ship his laptop to you, but... Damn it. Well, what good is he? Or is she? That. All right. Uh, yeah, we should totally do this. <laughs> right then. I don't know how, but yes. It'd be cool. It'd be very cool. Handling the whole per monitor, like there's an event, or not event, there's a Windows message that gets fired that tells you the DPI has changed. and Yeah, the yeah, I, should be able to hide I, all of that. I, that's exactly what I'm, th- I'm thinking. That this this is probably like a a simple issue of scaling. Assume everything is scaled for 96 DPI in the in the theme, and then math happens, and everything is scaled properly, and then redo the math if you get the 
WMDPI changed or whatever that message is. I just don't, I expect this is not that hard a feature to do inside the immuno. I think so. I agree with that. The hard part is, oh, the math. All right. Math, yes. Um, we really need to start doing this at some point, don't we? Yeah. It's going to get worse and worse. Exactly. So it sounds like one of our biggest problems right now is a high DPI monitor. Unless you want to, and I did this, you can actually, you know, set a normal, you know, like I have the 2560 by 1440 27-inch monitors, and you can set them to 200%. Um, <laughs> everything looks really funny, but you can actually, you know, do some coding there. But, yeah, it's a, a real monitor would, would probably help. If only to incur, you know, if only so you'll see the problem all the time and... Yeah, there's that too, right? On it. Yep, there's yep. that. Um, we should take this as soon as we can. This is one of those bugs that's just going to continue to look worse and worse. Or it's going to, what's actually what's going to happen, this is going to be one of those bugs that pops. Where nobody cares right now until <laughs> the day when everybody has high DPI monitors and everybody starts going, this is horrible, we have to fix it. Yeah. Minus bug plus feature. I don't know. This is a feature, right? I, I hope I would have opened it as a feature because yeah. I know how annoyed I get when... Oh. <laughs> oh, I called it a bug. Sorry. This issue. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> I have no sleep. Leave me alone. Uh, yeah, I, that would be awesome to done to have done, to be done with. That would actually be an interesting bug if I had time. I'd go try to figure out how to do it, but I'm kind of strapped for time in that place. So, so yeah, theme mutal and GDI plus for icons and theme mutal would be good. Yeah, icons are surprisingly, or not surprisingly, depending on how you think about it, really, really useful for, for high DPI work uh, because Windows takes care of choosing the right image yeah. based on the, the effective size of the control. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's nice. It's very nice. All right. Well, um, I think we're through all the bugs. Yep. That's good. So, yeah, that's some good stuff in there. Carrying on. Do, 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 do. R2 released yesterday. Did everybody do a dance? I don't know. Thank you, everybody, for I was involved in helping getting this thing out, verifying it, otherwise making it work and all that kind of good stuff. Um, it was very nice to get these bugs that were... Not going to be great for the future world to be all fixed and stuff. So uh, I've seen a number of people installing it. I mean, it's in the got a few hundred downloads. Um, so I assume people are. We would have heard people screaming if it wasn't working, at least to some degree. Um, and yeah, hopefully we won't have to do another R2 ever again. But you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Feels good to have it done. Works for me, fix a hidden virus issue, yes. Plus, we did a good job getting it out to the people that we thought had bugs and could verify it by having the build hidden for so long and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, woohoo, R2 out. We'll see how the adoption goes on that one. It's going to probably mess up our adoption numbers. we we'll have to look at people that are on 3.9 and R2 and try to figure out who jumped but didn't and whatever. So 3.9 will always be a split download count, but that's okay. Questions, comments, things people want to talk about today. Um, I want to toss out real quick. What about Tuesdays at 2:30 or you know something like that? I'm trying to get it not too late, but you know something like that. 2:30 p.m. Pacific. Sorry, Pacific time. Sorry, all my I'm all relative to me. Uh, <laughs> I'm wondering if I just I'm trying to find a slot. You know, we did the 9 a.m. slot all last year, uh, the, I'm just, you know, we're, we could do 10 a.m. the same slot this year, but, you know, whatever. Um, I'm just curious what people think. I'm wondering if we might get, like, if the people that are showing up here are like, yeah, I could do that, then we could get maybe more people that were not able to do that by finding that slot. Thus, I'm asking the people that are here. Because you're here, and that would be, you know, if you can, that'd be interesting. So I mean, I've also, I like the 2.30 p.m. better than 3 p.m. Pacific. Yeah, I was thinking 
Um, I was thinking 2.30 just because it, I, I'd also like to try to get our meetings to fit in a half hour, like we're almost doing today, um, and generally try to table stuff that goes over a half hour just to keep the meeting a bit more condensed rather than these gigantic ha hours, you know, things like that. Um, and I was like, 2.30 might get close to a better window. Bob, did you have any up, down, yes or no? Um, mostly, well, I mean, it works for me because I don't have the problem I'm about to suggest, which is, you know, it's 5.30 on the East Coast. Yes, and people is, are trying to travel home. Yeah, yeah. It's either, you know, it might cause someone to need to, you know, stick around near, near you know, Internet access uh, longer than they would normally would or... Yeah, you know, end up with people not quite being able to make it or yeah, whatever. So that's why I was hoping if we kept it to a half hour, you'd still be done by six, which, you know, kind of a thing, right? Yeah. And that was still, yeah, so it'd be close for Phil. Yeah. All right, well, you um, know what? We might try it. We might try yeah. it and see that's reasonable. what happens um, and just see where we get. Um, cause it's just, mornings are so challenging and when you, when you keep moving it later and later in my morning, it starts chewing up more and more of the day here and stuff like that. So, uh, let's see what happens. So I'll try to do that. We'll, we'll shift it to Tuesday for next week, Tuesday, two 30. I'll send out the meeting request. Um, and I will try to get better at doing that. <laughs> I was going to say, but, that actually might be a reason not to do it on Tuesday is, you know, to give you time to be reminded yeah you know the people here yeah but the people here i can always do it I, if i monday morning is not bad i can get it done by monday morning granted you don't need oh, a right. day okay. but essentially you're going to know whether it's canceled or not because you're going to assume that it's normally there so um all right cool so we'll try 230 and we'll see what we get and see if work. people are more or less awake or whatever um other stuff other things going on people want to talk about before i inserted my agenda Yes, no, maybe. Jacob's typing again. He was typing before I interrupted his typing. Nope, no more typing. This is that window you're like, all right, we need to have the... Ah, that half-baked pull request. The, yeah, I, that was uh, harder, and I couldn't do that one late at night. Need to go dig through that one and dig it. I mean... Um, yeah, so I, I think um, I saw Sean put some comments on it. I need to kind of go through it and yeah, poke and prod at it. But in general, yeah, we, I'll be it'll be interesting to see how that comes together. Yeah, all right. Uh, let me try to queue that up for tonight and see if I can't get through uh, at least the first pass of it, you know, and then put some comments on it. Cool. All right, Jacob. Thank you. Six four five one a doc issue, uh, yeah, essentially. It's a little bit more, yeah. Four six five, yeah. The bug that you opened, yeah, Phil, and um, uh, well, yes, the it's a doc issue, but you may want to go back and watch the video later today. To, we have a little commentary about it, so you can go back and do that. All right. Anything else? Anything else? Going, going, gone. All right. So, uh, unlike usual, where I say well, I'll see you all, you all in a week. It'll be, I don't know, four or five days, right? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, five days. But it still feels like a week, but only because I'm counting the weekend, right? Yes. Maybe? Yes, that's right. You agree with that? Okay. We need to support Rob as he deals with new baby brain goo. Oh, dude. It's very challenging. <laughs> it's very challenging. Um, all right. So on that note, you guys have a wonderful weekend, and we'll pick it up again on Tuesday. I'm curious to see if other things happen by doing it on Tuesday. You know, Maybe we'll shift the builds to be Wednesdays or something. I don't know. We'll see. Um, anything like that. Uh, yeah, interesting idea. Yeah, all right. Well, we'll talk about it next week. All right. All right. Until then, 
All y'all have fun. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye now.